Would you turn, please, to the book of Psalms this evening? Psalm 34. And if you didn't bring a Bible, raise up your hand. Our ushers have extra Bibles. We'd be glad to loan you one of ours. Maybe you got ten at home, but you didn't bring one tonight. Raise your hand. Use one of ours. Take the time. Make the effort. Turn to the Scripture. And let your eyes rest on these wonderful words. The Bible said they are life to those that find them. They are health and medicine to all their flesh. Right? Now, did you hear that first part? Life to those that find them. Well, does that mean just turning and finding it in the book? You go, whoop, I found it. So here we go, life and health. If that was it, all you'd have to do is get anybody to turn and find it and put their finger on it and say, well, I found it. No, he's talking about a finding beyond just a mechanical thing, right? You realize you can hear and not hear. You can see and not see. You can hear and not understand. That's why he said, my son, attend to my words, right? Incline your ear. Incline. Does that, that mean you're trying to hear it? Yes. You're focusing. Yes. To my sakes. Don't let them depart from your eyes. That means more than a glance, doesn't it? Don't let them depart. That means you look and you keep on looking. Yes. You listen and you keep on listening. Yes. You hear and you keep on hearing. Yes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You. Right? Yes. For they are life yes. to those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Should we find some good words tonight? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Is it all up to me? No. Is it up to your neighbor, or your brother, your sister, or in front of you, behind you? Well, no. Uh, you you got to be looking for yourself. Right? Say, so I'm going to find something good tonight. I'm going to find something good. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Psalm 34, the first verse, we'll begin reading, Psalm 34, what does it say? At all times His praise shall continually be, that's not just thinking about it, continually. Uh, what if every Christian acted on that verse? And they're all blessing the Lord all the time, and the praise of God is continually in their mouth. Be a different life. Verse 2, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So it's only the proud folks that don't want to hear about it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Thank you, Lord. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Thank you, Lord. That means you're fear free. They looked unto Him and were lightened. See, you, you can tell who and what you're looking at by your progress. If it gets darker, you get more confused and more perplexed, you're looking at the wrong thing. Because looking at Him, you become enlightened. And the more you look at Him and the more you look at the right thing, it gets clearer. In the light, you see and you know. In the dark, you stumble and you don't know and you don't see. This... Uh, their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and said, I'm sorry, but it's my will for you to be poor. <laughs> Why do some people preach that then? No, the poor man cried, and the Lord saved him. Right? Out of all his trouble. And it's a specific category of troubles. It's poor troubles. Yes. <laughs> huh? Yes, sir. Does God care about delivering you out of your poor problems? Yes. 
problems brought about by being poor. Poor is not the will of God. Never was, never will be. Well, I think I learned a lot of things being poor, Brother Keith. Nothing you couldn't have learned better and more easily being rich. (laughs) Well, I just don't believe now that a fellow can really appreciate nice things unless he's come up hard where you believe wrong. It is possible to be very thankful and have a lot. It is possible to be such an individual that the more you get, the more thankful you are. That the more God blesses you, the more you humble yourself, and the more thankful. It is possible. Right? Notice he said, The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them. Go ahead and confess that. Say it out loud. The angel of the Lord encamps round about me and all mine and delivers us. Hallelujah. Now let's go on further than that. Say it out loud. A thousand may fall right beside me. Ten thousand. May fall, may fall right beside me, right beside on, me. The on the other side, but it won't happen to me. Happen to me. Am I quoting scripture? Yes. Said out loud, no plague, no plague will, come will come to my house. Am I quoting scripture? Yes. Yeah. But now why then do millions turn around and say, well, now I wouldn't say that. Because you just never know. Bad things come to us all. And we just don't know the time nor the season. But God, in His great wisdom, is mysterious. And we don't always know why. But it, well, they're saying it could be His will for you to fall. And for the plague to come to your house. And for you to be destroyed. And you won't know. And you might never know in this life. But it's the will of God. That does not agree with these scriptures. You've got to make up your mind now what you believe. You believe scriptures or you believe religion. You believe men's ideas. Men's feeble efforts trying to explain why things happen. You've got to stay with the word. Even when you don't understand, stay with the Word. It may look like some things happen contrary to the Word, but that just means you don't understand some things. Agree with the Word. Right? This is right. No matter what I've seen or you've seen or experienced or haven't experienced, this is right. This is right. Angel of the Lord camps round about us. You believe that? I mean, you need to see it. You need to, you need to be able to close your eyes and by faith see angels encamped round about your house, your family, your kids, round, round about your business, round about your cars, and they can fly fast too. Round about every, every, everywhere you go, everything you do, and they are there not just to be there, they are there to what? Huh? To deliver you if and when you need it. Right? But what you say and what you believe has a lot to do with how much they're able to do. You've got to agree with the Word. Because they perform His Word. And they hearken to the voice of His Word. Verse 8. Here's our text. It just took us a little bit to get there. What does it say? Oh, now notice, notice how it started out. Oh. With an O. <laughs> Why say O? Oh? Oh. How many believe this is a O? Oh. No, this ain't an O. Oh. Oh. What is this? O! Oh. Oh. Why do we need an O? <laughs> you just need one. O! Oh. Taste! And see that the Lord is good. Oh. Oh. Oh, 
what? Oh, He's so good. Right? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. Fear the Lord, you His saints, for there is no want, zero want, to them that fear Him. Even the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Good thing. He's a good God. People that seek Him and experience Him, they know He's good. And they go, Ooh, oh, He is so good. I have tasted for myself, and He is good. And those that seek Him don't lack or want for any good thing, because He's a good God to experience good things. We're on a series now uh, talking about the goodness of God. God is good. And that sounds like such a simple thing, but it is a big, big thing. And it is something that the enemy has attacked, I mean unceasingly, for centuries uh, where the church is concerned. And there, is, there are so many Christians, they, they wouldn't acknowledge it. But in many areas and degrees, they, ha- they don't believe in the goodness of God. They have been confused they, th- through the intellects of unbelieving men and women, uh, through organizations and organized religion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the goodness of God has been diluted. It has been explained away. It has been covered. It has been, uh, you know, excused. And even though people haven't come right out and said it, they imply that God has a dark side. And you really see that more than you do it the other. And uh, a lot of people... Believe God, you know, is mostly harsh and mostly judgmental. And they wouldn't say it, though, because they're scared of Him. And they'd say, yeah, yeah, He's a good God, yeah, yeah. But they want to say the right thing so they don't get hurt. And there are even people that tithe, not because they want to. They're just scared if they don't, something bad will happen to them. It's kind of like paying off the mafia. That's right. You know, somebody organized crime comes into your shop downtown in, in, with, a, with a ball bat and goes, hey, you know, we're selling insurance today. You go, I got plenty of insurance. Not from us, you don't. I, well, I don't need any more insurance. Uh, yeah, you do. Because things happen. You understand? Things happen to shops that don't have enough insurance. So we'll be by every week to collect our insurance. And so they pay it, not because they want to, because they're scared if they don't, they're going to get destroyed. And there's people that they go to church that way. They don't want to go to church. They don't enjoy it. They can't wait till it's over. But they're scared not to get up and go. Because something bad might happen to you if you don't go. And there's people that tie, they write that check. You know, they don't want to. But they write it, right? Why? Because give God his money, keep him happy. Man, (laughs) because, boy, what if that check don't get there? Whoo, watch out. And do you understand what I'm saying? There are millions and millions of Christians that don't really have an awareness that God is a good God. They don't. God has been portrayed to them as all kind of things, but the goodness has not really come through to them. They're not living in the awareness of the goodness of God. And that's why the Spirit says through the psalmist, Come and taste for yourself. Taste and see. And you'll know then that He is good. Truly good. Are you believing with me on this series? Can we come up to a greater awareness? Much, much, much greater. Can the goodness of God be more real to us than ever before? Can can we get revelation of His goodness far beyond what we ever knew or imagined? Would it change our life? 
Would it help us? Let me tell you what we ought to be after too. I'm telling you, the devil has lied to us about God. And some of it has been so pervasive that you don't recognize it. I'm believing for the covers to be pulled off of the lies of the enemy about the character of God. Subtle stuff that you don't even really notice, but it's there underlying. You learned it when you were a child. You learned it when you were a teenager. It's, it's, it's something that's commonly held, but it's a lie. It's not true. God's not like that. I want to know Him as He really is. Not the way some group of, uh, you know, uh, people with degrees got together and voted that he was and wrote a book that I want to know how he really is and taste and see for myself. Right? And I already know and believe he's good. He's good. And I know the more I find out about it, the more I'll say, oh, oh, oh. Got to have that. Oh, it's, it's necessary. Oh, he is good. Try it out. Get, you know, get warmed up on it. Say, say it out loud. Oh! Oh! God is good. Oh. Have, have you noticed when something's really good, you don't get verbose. You don't wax eloquent with a big vocabulary. You grunt and squeal and not even real language you, you know you, you taste some food that's wonderful you don't go this is some of the finest cuisine I've put on my palate and I don't know what <laughs> what do you say you, you go ooh mm, mm, mm. Mm. oh that's good Right? Because it ain't about description, it's about experience. Right? They say a picture's worth a thousand words, well, the taste is worth a thousand words. And that's what he's saying. Don't just let somebody else describe the goodness of God to you. Come on up to the table. Taste just for yourself. Oh, taste and see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks now, and if you haven't been with us, it, it would behoove you and help you to go download the uh, previous messages and, and or get them out here in the Word Supply, all for free. Amen. But let's go on tonight. God is good. What is good? What is good? Well, here's the definition of the words, of the word Good, from the Hebrew and the Greek, means pleasant, beautiful, excellent, rich, or prosperous, well, appropriate, beneficial, happy, honest, and honorable, and right. Is God good? God is pleasant. He's certainly not unpleasant. God is beautiful. He's not ugly. God is excellent. Right? God is rich and prosperous. Isn't he? We well, tell a lot about somebody by how they live. God lives in a nice place, doesn't he? How many know it would be hypocritical for him to teach us to live broke while he lives the way he does? Right? And it'd be hypocritical for him to say that a man that doesn't take care of his family is worse than an infidel denied to faith and then him not take care of his family to the top. Be hypocritical. I don't care who you are. You can't have double standard. Right? These are not my words. He said, as dear children, be imitators or followers of God. He tells us to imitate him. 
act like him. Well, he is rich. He is prosperous. He is well off. Everything he does is appropriate. Everything he does is beneficial. He's a happy God. So many religions have a picture of God on the throne. And he's old. Old. Long white beard and old. 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 And you look at him right in the face. He's not happy. He's not sad. He's not glad. He's just old. <laughs> but really, if you look close, mostly mad. Hmm? And you, you, pictures of Jesus. Have you seen them? Most of them, he looks weak and sad. Right? Well, he, he did endure something in the garden and at the uh, scourging. And at the crucifixion. But that was a few days. You know. A couple of days and, and then after that. But his whole life was not like that. Hmm? The Bible said he was anointed with the oil of joy and gladness. Above his brethren. Jesus is a happy Jesus. He'd have to be because he's a strong Jesus. Don't, don't pay much attention to all these pictures and stuff. I'm telling you, Jesus is your hero. You talk about strong. You talk about a joy to be around. Little kids love to be around Jesus. They did. Little children don't like being around grouches. Are people that everything is wrong... Everything, that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the devil. Sit down and be quiet, that's the devil. You're full of the devil. Shh, be quiet, get up and sit on that. That's the devil. It's no wonder a lot of children and young people, as soon as they can leave home, they are gone. They are gone. As soon as they don't have to go to church, they don't. Because they, th they think that what mom and daddy has told them about God, they think that's who God is. And every time you ask God about something, he goes, that's the devil. <laughs> that's not him. I said, that's not him. That's not him. He is long suffering and patient and kind and good and full of mercy and rich in mercy to all who ask and call. He's good. He's good. He's good. Most people don't know him like that. They know him as judgmental, critical, harsh, because that has been their experience with people who claim to know him. God has been lied on. God has been represented, misrepresented by preachers and churches and ministries. Are you listening? Now, it's not for us to judge anybody, but let's see to it that we don't do it. That let, let's, let's see to it that we don't misrepresent God to people around about us that don't know Him. Because they assume we do. A lot of them will assume what we say about Him is right. So we don't need to misrepresent Him to them. Uh, God is, everything He does is beneficial. He's a happy God. Everything God does is absolutely true and honest, and honorable, and everything God does is right. Because He is good. He's good. Now go with me, if you would, to the book of Isaiah, the first chapter, Isaiah 1. Are you all with me tonight? Can we, can we go further in this? Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, great principle, great truth that so many of us 
have heard and know. Isaiah 1 and 19. What does it say? If you be willing and obedient. Now you could teach a seminar on those two words. Can you obey but not be willing? Could you be willing but not do it? And, and that doesn't work. You've got to be willing and obedient. You know, young ones have to learn that. You know, you, you correct them about something and they stomp out of the room and shut the door and, all right, I'll do it. Well, that ain't good enough. Well, I'll do it. That ain't good enough. It's not good enough for God. If, it's, if you're not willing to do it, it is unacceptable even though you did it. The Bible talks about individuals who did what I'm quoting now. They did what was right in the Lord, right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. He looks at the heart, not just what you do. Right? And you can say, oh, I'm willing. I love the Lord. Yes, I will. I'm willing to do anything, but you never do it. That's not going, not going to cut it either. If you're willing and obedient, what will happen? What will happen? Oh, come on. You will eat the good of the land. Now, let, hold your place here and go to the book of Psalms. I should have had you keep that. But in the, hold your place, we're not through with that, Isaiah, but back over to Psalms and uh, oh, 27. I got lots of good scriptures tonight. Psalm 27. If you be willing and obedient, what will happen? You will eat the good of what? The good of heaven? No. The good of what? Not the good of heaven. That's not what this verse is talking about. You'll eat the good of the land. That's the land you live on. That's the land down here. Psalm 27, are you there? It says, Psalm 27, and uh, 13, 27, 13, it's, it says, I had fainted unless, what? I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land. Now, you can't say it any plainer than this. He's not talking about when you get to heaven. In the land of the... And he uses that same word, land. In the land of the living. Now, if you've read your Bible, you know there's a whole lot in here about the land. God giving you the land. Now, I'm telling you. Scores and scores and scores of specific references about the land. And again and again, you see the word good land. Good land. Right? Somebody say good land. Good land. land. Y'all got to help me out tonight. I'm not just talking about noise now. I'm talking about focus and faith. Y'all with me on this? Say it out loud. Good land. land. He said, "I, I would have fainted. I, I, I wouldn't have made it unless what? Unless I had believed something. Unless I had believed to see what? So you got to believe he's good, right? You wouldn't be believing to see goodness if you didn't believe he was good. And you got to believe it is his will to manifest his goodness. Right down here in this life, in in the here and now, in the midst of the bad and ugly, right? 
You got to believe that God is good and willing and able to manifest His goodness right down here in the land of the living, or else why you wouldn't believe to see that goodness. You must believe in the goodness of God. And not just as an abstract. You must believe, actively expect to see the goodness of the Lord manifested. Where? In the land of the living. That's right here and now in this mortal life. And this is where millions of Christians are failing. Oh, yeah, they'd, they'd tell you in a heartbeat, God's a good God. Oh, and heaven is going to be so good. Oh, oh, it's going to be so good, so good. What about right here and now? Well, we just have to hold out till the end. And so are they really actively expecting to see the goodness of the Lord here and now? And a lot of them find fault with us. And so y'all are just materialistic. Y'all believing to be healed in your natural mortal body right here and now. You're believing for money to come in right here and now. You're believing to enjoy good and nice stuff right here and now. Y'all are just materialistic. You'll have all that when you get to heaven. But now you just got to hold out to the end. Am I telling it right? Don't millions of Christians believe that? So are they... Actively expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in their lives. They're not. They're expecting to go to heaven and see goodness there. But not really. They're, 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 well, it's up to the Lord. We might taste a few good things here and there, but you know, it's just up to Him. But there's going to be a lot of sorrow and sadness. And that's just how this old life is. Well, no, we are to be expecting every day of our lives... And like what Brother Oral Roberts has said all his life, ministry life, what did he say? God is a good God. And something good is going to happen to you today. Well, why, why would he say that? Why would the Spirit of the Lord prompt him to say that? To get you, to get me, to expect something good to happen in our life today. Now I know, this is, I know this sounds very simplistic, but do you understand millions of Christians are not doing this. They are not doing this. They get up in the morning and they see what happens. <laughs> and they figure it's going to be mostly bad, but you know, we might have a ray of sunshine. <laughs> but we just have to see, because you just never know what's going to happen. And they are not using their faith to see goodness of God manifested in this life. So that's why you and I got to double up. Because a lot of folk are not going to. They are just not. They just rather just live in their no-fault religion, in their, you know, no responsibility situation. That's why you and I have to double up and believe for more extra goodness. Because so many people are not. Sit out loud, I'm expecting. Something good, Something good every day. Every day. I'm, believing I'm believing to see, to see the, goodness the goodness of God right here and now, right here and now. In, the in the land of the living, of the living. Here, here now, now. For, me. for me, others, others. I'm, expecting I'm expecting to see it. Is it Bible? Yes. Now, let, let's, let's back up. Why then do a lot of people faint? He said, I'd have fainted unless I had done that. Why do a lot of people faint and give up and back off and they just get suicidal and every other thing? Why? Because they are no longer expecting to see the goodness of the... They're expecting to see the same bad thing tomorrow that they're looking at right now or worse. And when you do that, you, you're, there's no faith. You do get hopeless and full of fear. 
dreading what's happening tomorrow. You don't, you don't want to get up. People get to the place where they, that's why a lot of people wind up in the street. They just get to the place, well, why, what's the use? I get up and go, you know, go to work, and the boss is just going to chew me out and be mean to me. And, and I make a little money, the government's going to get most of it. What they don't get, my wife or family and husband will get. And <laughs> why bother? It ain't going to get any better. I'm just going to get older. And the world's getting worse. I'll just go get a wine bottle, a sleeping bag. People give up. They quit. Are they expecting to see the goodness of the Lord? No, they're not. They're saying, man. And the thing is, I, it's a subtle thing, but how many preachers are preaching that everything is going down? Oh man, this world, this world's going to hell in a handbag. And our youth are going to hell, and the children are all going to hell, and we're all going. You know, it's just the best days are behind us. <laughs> well, we should we should have been born another time because we're in an evil old world, and this old thing is just rotten and falling apart. And are they expecting to see the goodness of the? No, they have more faith in sin. And in the curse and in the work of the devil than they do the work of God. Yeah, the Bible said evil men are going to wax worse and worse. But that's evil men. That ain't us. That's not our children. That's not our youth. That's not our businesses. That's not our homes. The path of the just is going to get brighter and brighter unto the full day sun. How many have read the verse about days of heaven on the earth? Can you have it? You can. Oh, it's not going, every day is not going to be exactly like being in heaven, but you can have days of heaven and times of refreshing right here, right now. A lot of folks don't believe it, but you can live a life that is so good that other people would think you're lying about it. They think, oh, nobody's that happy. <laughs> and you don't, you don't take anything? No. Nobody's, nobody's like that. And they're not on drugs or something. Or You're lying. You're just, you're just putting, you're just faking. No, you can have a life that is so good that other people think you're lying about. But you're not. If you're willing and obedient... You'll eat what? What's the good of the land? It's the best. I said it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. I was, I was with a friend the other day, and they just got a new aircraft, new to them. It was an 80-something mo- year model, so it's, what, 20-something years old. It ain't new. But it's new to them, and it was nice. They fixed it all up, and they came in. They wanted me to see it. I wanted to see it. We went and saw it and talked about it with them, shouted. Well, there was a a big company that come in with a a golf stream that parked beside them. The thing's probably worth $50 million. I mean, this this other little plane my brother had, it. you know, you could get lost in the shadow of this thing. And uh, some people were there. Uh, One of the guys knew me and this other brother. And he was so happy to see us. And he said, glory to God. Brother so-and-so got a plane. And, and um, yeah, yeah. But another guy came in. And he said, what does that preacher need that for? Well, he didn't say, I noticed he didn't say a word about these, all these guys came out and got in that Gulf Stream and left. Right. Why? Well, they're business people. See, Christians don't believe this verse. Who is that stuff made for? I know a Christian brother was talking about one time God gave him a $15,000 dog. Yeah. You never heard so much clamor among fellow preachers and other people. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) That ain't right. That ain't right. He could have, he could have, you know, sold that dog and sent that money to the missionary. 
Well, so could you. You could have sold Fido and put your five dollars in the, you know. The principle is the same. Listen to me now. People who say that, oh, 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 they could have put that money in his ministry. Every time you hear that, note hypocrite. Every, every time you hear that, there's somebody in the Bible who said that very thing. Oh, oh, that could have been sold and given to the poor. Who said that? Judas, Judas Iscariot. And the Bible said he said it not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He wanted that in his pocket. And you notice, I don't care who they are, people who talk like that, they're hypocrites. I had a fellow trying to tell me the same thing one time. Before. A brother had a $10,000 watch. Oh, it made him so mad, it upset him so bad. He said he could have sold that. He could, I said, you could sell yours. Have you sold yours and put it in? That's good. That's good. Well, no, it ain't worth anything, you know, but his is worth... It doesn't matter. He, he could do with what he has. You can only do with what you have. Oh, they could do... Yeah, and you could, get, you could sow one of your loaves of bread and get by on the other. They don't need... See, people are hypocrites who talk like this. They are not doing what they are saying other people should be doing. They're a hypocrite. And some are like Judas thieves. Their big problem was it. They, they want it. That's why they're so upset. But anyway, you know, this, this guy was saying, Oh, what does that preacher need that for? What does he do with that? I said, Well, what does anybody do with one? Why do they make them? Because people want to fly. They want to fly from point A to point B. Saves all kind of time. Don't wear you out. That's why whiskey companies have them. That's why owners of pornographic magazines have them. Right? That's why people at, you know, large companies and small and all, you know, that's why they have them. And I suppose that's why believers would have them too because they want to fly from one place to the other. Right? And it, the, the brother that knew us, it upset him. So the skin, he he kind of snarled. I said, no, no, just, no, that's all right. He said, why did he say that? I said, well, he doesn't see the value of what we do. Right. You know, he doesn't do what we do, so he, he's really completely ignorant of this whole thing. But... The problem, if it was just him, it'd be one thing. But there are millions of Christians who believe like that. Christians. Because they don't believe this. They believe the good of the land is for somebody else. The best stuff, the nicest stuff, the most expensive stuff is for somebody else. And now listen to me. The goodness of God is too much for them to believe. He is so good, they don't believe it. It's easier for them to believe he doesn't really want them to have much. They, they balk and they choke on his great goodness. It takes faith to believe it and receive it. And, it, and you know your own failures and mistakes and sins, so it takes faith to believe that after all the junk you've done, God still wants you, right, to enjoy that level of goodness. It takes faith to believe the love, and it takes faith to believe the goodness. Are you with me on this? Now what I've just said is maybe bigger than you know. We gotta camp on this, we gotta get this inside of us. We must believe the love of God. And we must believe the goodness of God to us. If you're willing and obedient, what did the Lord say? So is it his will? Now, of course, if you're gonna disobey him and you're not willing to do anything he says, then he didn't tell you you're gonna enjoy the good of the land. 
Right? He told you you'd be destroyed in the very next verse. So you got to qualify. But if you will be willing and obedient, does God want you to have sinners wore out stuff? Huh? Does He want your, your major goal in life to show everybody how much money you can save by, you know, running tires until there's one tread left? Right? Running your wiper blades until both ends are flapping. Somebody says, well, you didn't change it. Oh, it's got a lot of got good wipes left in it. <laughs> Rinsing out the shampoo bottle five times. Because well, it's got a little, I think I can get enough to get a lather. <laughs> People glory in this. No, they, they have deceived themselves into thinking this is really what a good Christian is. Somebody who can save money. <laughs> well, here we are then, aren't we? What is the Great Commission? Stay at home and save that money. Huh? Don't go too big. Don't go too far. Save that money. Well, is that a major directive in the work of God? Did He keep telling us, save that money, save that money. Oh, watch out, watch out. Don't spend too much. Save that money. No. That is fear-based. Fear that you're going to run out. Fear that you might not have enough. Fear that God might not come through in time. You might run out, so we better squeeze this thing as long as she'll run. Now, I grew up poor. So I know from whence I speak. It's a mentality. And it's ingrained in you. And it takes some major word of God over a prolonged period of time plus a willing heart to change. And even after you've changed and changed and changed for decades, you'll see some more of the ugly, stinking, tight, poverty <laughs> junk and you got to despise it. you got to go, whoa, now wait a minute. That ain't God. God ain't that way. There's more bananas fall off in the jungle every day and rot than all the monkeys in the world will ever eat. There's too many fish in the sea. Too many. Right? And the list goes on and on and on. God is a too much. God, He's a big God. He's a God of abundance, of ab yes. overflowing excess. Yes. He never taught you to be tight and squeaky and watch every penny. That's the opposite of what He taught us to be and do. Can you say amen? amen. The liberal soul shall be made fat. The Scripture said, Man, don't you, it does my heart good to hear about that little guy standing back there with his roll of quarters. Doing what? Well, he's old enough to know he could buy something for himself with them quarters. Right? Why, how can he be so free? And then he gets $10, he sows it. He gets $100, that's a big bill for a four-year-old. And he sows it. How can he be so free? Because he believes God is going to be there tomorrow. And there's a lot more where that came from. And he is not afraid of running out. And unless you be converted and become his little children, you won't enter in, the scripture says. Say it out loud, God's a good God. He's a big God. 
Hallelujah. He, he's a too much, abundant, overflowing, good God. Now go with me, if you would, back in the Old Testament here, reminding ourselves how God is, how He's always been. In Deuteronomy, the first chapter. Why do people faint? Why do they give up? Why do they quit? They don't believe what? They don't believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to God. Hearts are being changed tonight. I'm telling you, things are changing that you can't see. And it's going to mean lives are going to be different. You won't see it all tomorrow or the next day, but you just watch as things unfold. You'll just have a different life. You'll wind up in a different place. Stinginess is bondage. I said it's bondage. And it hurts people all around you. People right and left are putting money ahead of their family. They're putting stuff ahead of their relations. They're sacrificing relationships and friends over nothing amounts. It's happening every day here in Branson. And it ought not be. I said it ought not be. Deuteronomy 1. God delivered His people out of the world system, out of bondage. And what did He tell them in getting them out of there? Did He have a plan? Huh? Has He got somewhere for them to go? And what kind of place is it? If you had to pick one word, what, what kind of place... Has God already, he said that he had looked throughout the, the, the earth and he picked out a spot for him. Yeah. Notice in Deuteronomy 1 and 23 is talking about when they went in and searched out and spied out the land. Verse 24, they came back in the valley of Eshcol. You know, that's where they found those big grapes. Yeah. Took two men, two men. To haul a a bunch, a cluster of grapes on a pole. Now that's major grapes. What kind of land would produce some kind of grapes? Good soil. Good climate. Good rainfall. Right? Good, good, good. And they came bringing those in. In verse 25, they took of the fruit of the land in their hands... And they brought it down to us, and they brought us word again, and they said, It is a good land which the Lord our God does give us. What kind of land? It's a good. Does this mean anything to us? Living now in 2006, does this have any bearing on us or application to us? The Bible tells us that we are to give heed to what was spoken to them. Right? Because everything that happened to them was a type and an example to us for today. This is a type of our life today. Does God have a good land for us today? Does He? Yes, He does. But now look at the very next verse. It's kind of sad. What did it say? Notwithstanding or but you would not go up couldn't go up? No, you wouldn't. But you did what? Rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Now let's just stop here. Why would you do that? Good land. It's right there. Why would you rebel against the Lord? Somebody said fear, and that's right. But if that fear is attached to something. How many remember this scripture? Perfect love... Could you be free from fears that would hold you out? So what is the problem here? Hold your place here and go to 1 John.
we're moving a little bit line upon line, but some of these ways we haven't necessarily gone before. So, 1 John 4. So many times people say you can talk about the problem and why something happened, and folks will say fear, and that's true, but you've got to go beyond that. Why, why was the fear able to be there? And here you see, if we know that perfect love casts out fear, then it was a, a love issue. And not like you might think. Not people, when you say that, people think, oh yeah, it's a failure of walking in love with other people. No, that's not what I'm talking about. No. First John 4, are you there? You'll see the phrase right here. First John 4 and um, 15. Whoever will confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Now let me just stop right here. Is love good? Yes. Yeah. God, the Bible says both. It says God is love and the Bible says God is good. Right? Now this, this is a great truth. Believing that God is love equals believing that God is good. If you really believe one, you have to believe the other. Right? People may try to tell you so, but there's nobody that has been blinded and confused through tradition that believes that God is a cruel, mean, and even sometimes unfair and sadistic God, but they love Him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. No, they don't. I said, no, they don't. But when you taste and see how good God really is, it causes you to love Him even more. And then you taste that He's better than you knew, and so you love Him even more. And then He reveals even more of His goodness to you, and you love Him even more. It's supposed to just go on and on through eternity. But the two are linked. To believe that God is love is to believe that God is good. But notice, notice what he said. We have what? We have known and what? Believed the love that God has to us. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to get this out. The problem, one of the biggest problems in the earth is that people have not believed the love. Others have told them that God loved them, but they did not believe it. They, they try to believe it in theory, but really they don't believe it. Have you heard this phrase in the world? If it sounds too good to be true, what? It's probably not true. If it sounds too good to be true, it's probably not true. Have you heard that before? How many in here have heard that phrase? If it sounds too good to be true, look at that, nearly every hand. Why? That is, that is widely. People say it and kind of laugh when they say it, but they really believe it. And the problem is so many in the church they don't mean to, they don't think they do, but they do. If it sounds really, really, really amazingly good, it's too good to be true. Millions of Christians, to tell them God wants you to be healed. You, healed of this, now. He wants you to live long, have a great life, live to a great age. Before you die, be aged and rich and satisfied before you go on. To millions of Christians, that just sounds like a fairy tale. It just sounds too good to be real. And then you start talking about God wants you rich. <laughs> he wants you out of your poverty. 
He wants every debt of yours paid. He wants you to live in a nice house. He wants you to have the best clothes that are made in the world. He wants you to have the best cars that are made in the world. Can you tell when we start talking about that? It's like you you run up against something. It's like people are like, that sounds nice. (laughs) If it were only true. It is true. But it is so good... Compared to what we have heard and seen and known, it takes faith to believe it. Come on now. This is breakthrough territory. It takes faith to believe that God loves you even as He loves the Lord Jesus who never sinned and never did anything except obey Him and completely please Him every moment of every day on the earth, the devil will tell you, ain't no way God loves you with what you've done, the way He loves Jesus and what He did. Well, the Bible's either true or it's not. That God loves me even as He loves the Lord Jesus. See, what did He say? We have known and what? And believed this love. I remember, thank God, the Lord helped me. Phyllis and I, we had just got married. We got married young, right out of high school. And didn't have anything, didn't know anything. And we heard some materials. Which makes me want to sow materials. (laughs) And, And... we, if we'd have had to buy them at that time, I, I'm sure we would not have. Our money was so tight and our revelation and light was so low, we didn't know that we needed them. But Phyllis worked for a man, a doctor, chiropractor, and he had a library of Copeland tapes and Savelle and uh, Hagen and Teal Osborne and... The list goes on. And he kept suggesting to her, would you take these home, y'all, and you and Keith listen to them? And she thought, well, no thanks, you know. We had never heard of anybody listening to a preaching tape. <laughs> Everybody, we didn't even want to get out of church quick as you could, you know. I mean? yeah. That you would actually go home on your own time yeah. and play a, ta- play a tape of music, okay, but a tape of preaching, it was just a foreign concept. But he just kept on. You know, he'd go for a few weeks or a month and then he'd bring it up again, you know. Why don't you take, boy, I enjoyed these, you know. Would you, won't you take these and listen to them? And finally, just because he's her employer, she took them home. And we listened to them. And our life began to change. And we listened to them and listened to them and listened to them. And then we said, got some more? He said, yeah. And we listened to him and listened to him. And finally, it got to where every night after we got in from work, we'd get in our little uh, 1969 Marriott mobile home with the uh, uh, red carpet and the uh, genuine imitation leather seat and, um, and get our little battery-operated tape player and sit down and listen to a tape. And that was our entertainment and everything else. And, and we didn't realize it now. But, oh, God was getting us ready. He was, he, was, he was getting some faith into us to be able to hear His voice and take the step into the will of God. But I, I know when, it, when some things happened, and she and I, we begin to hear that God wanted you blessed. We thought, God wants me to have a nice car? And your first thought is, ah, that's, that's too good to be true. God still heals your physical body today, and He always wants to do it, anytime. And, and you're, you're not taught that. You're not programmed to think that way. But I thank God for the grace of God. I know the season of our lives when we begin to believe it. Amen. We begin to think... He is that good. I just believe He is that good. I just believe that's just like a good God. He would want to do good things for you. 
I just believe it. And we actually begin to expect to see good things happen in our life in the land of the living. Other people thought we were nuts. Some of them are not laughing so much now. Because they know where we came from. But I'm telling you, it started right there. And I know some, some people that... Some, some of my contemporaries in that same area and situation, they heard the same thing I did and they scoffed at it. They thought, ah, you know God don't care about that kind of thing. Now God cares if you go to heaven or hell. And that's what you're to do, preach the gospel. <laughs> I've actually had people tell me, we don't, we don't preach all that healing and prosperity junk. We just, just preach the gospel. I see. So, where are you right now? Go to John 3.16. No, no, excuse me. I do want you to go there, but go to, on your way there, go to Mark 16. Mark 16. And see something maybe that you... Might not have thought about before. Mark 16, if, if you don't know how to get there quickly, that's all right. A lot of you can quote it. Uh, what did he say? Go into all the world. And what? Do what? Preach means proclaim. Proclaim what? Now, gospel is a King James word. What does gospel mean? What kind of news? Well, a good God has got to have. Good news. Right? Go into all the world and preach what? You have to be like us or you'll go to hell. That ain't good news. Especially if you don't want to be like them. Uh, <laughs> you saw a rascal, you're a sinner and you, you deserve to go to hell and you're going to hell if you don't change. You're full of the devil and you act like the devil. And you look like the devil too. <laughs> is that good news? But what some people call preaching the gospel is preaching hellfire and brimstone. You're going to hell if you don't change. It's bad. That's bad news. That's not good news. That's not the gospel. Well, that's true. It ain't good news. What's good news? Tell me what's good news. God, who is a good God, so loved the world that He gave. He's such a good God. That He gave His only begotten Son. Right? That what? Whoever would believe on it. Do you see you're going to have to believe the goodness of God? All this is wrapped up. You've got to believe that God is so good, that He loves you so much, that He would do this for you even though you may have failed so terribly. You've got to believe He's that good. Yeah, but you don't know how bad I am, Brother Keith. Yeah, and you don't know how good He is. Yeah, but I've been so bad. Yeah, but He's so good. Well, I've failed in so many ways. You have faith in your failure more than faith in His goodness. Or you'd quit talking about it. And you'd humble yourself. And, and we all know you've messed it and blown it. You ain't got to keep telling us. Start talking about how good He is that He would forgive you. And He would cleanse you. And not mention your sins to you again. He's so good. Have more faith in His goodness than in your sin. Have more faith in the blood than in your failure. Right? He said, Go into all the world and proclaim, proclaim it. Shout it from the rooftops. Right? Preach it over the TV and the satellite and the internet. And proclaim it and tell everybody what? The good What's good news? 
Jesus, you know, was, uh, we have reason to believe that repeatedly he would take the, the passage from Isaiah and start out his sermon and say, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What's good news to the poor man? You're not going to hell. No, no, you should say good news to the lost man. I had a fellow one time try to take me to test. He said, now, brother, being saved from sin and, and believe it on Jesus and being saved is the most important message. I said, well, that depends. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You're a cult. <laughs> I mean, shocked him. Kind of pleased him because he wanted to believe I was a bad guy. I said, well, I, I don't agree with that. I said, that depends. He said, what? I said, well, you tell me. If you're saved and you know God, but you're powerless in your life, is Jesus the Savior the most important message to you? No. You've already heard that message. You're saved. Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, is the most important message for you right now. Now, to the man that's lost and don't know God, yes, the most important message to him or her is Jesus the Savior. But let's say you're saved. You've been saved for 40 years. And you can't pay your bills. And you're always behind. And you're a bad witness in the community because of your finances. Is Jesus the Savior the most important message to you? No, you already know Him as Savior. You're already saved. Names in the Lamb's Book of Life? Jesus the Provider. Jesus the Good God of Abundance. Who'll supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ. That's the message you need to hear. Right? Maybe you got all the money in the world. But you're too sick to even get up and go to church. You've been saved and talking in tongues for years. Well, Jesus the Savior is not the most important message to you. You need to hear about Jesus the Healer. And all of those are parts of the same gospel. The same good news. Good news. Jesus came. He paid the price. He offered His Spirit for our spirit. He offered His soul for our soul. He offered our body for our body. Even though He was so rich, He became poor for us. So we could be rich. There's good news to the lost man. There's good news to the sick man. There's good news to the powerless Christian. There's good news to the poor broke man. There's good news, good news. It's our job to proclaim it. What if you tell people the good news and they say, I don't care, I don't believe it. Then you say, well, you're going to hell if you don't change. We've got bad news for them now. Yeah. But give them the good news first. And then if they receive it, you don't have to give them any bad news, right? <laughs> good news. Good news. Hallelujah. Go to First Kings 10. How much time do I have? Glory to God. Thank you, Master. I believe in the goodness of God. I believe He's good, good. I believe He's better than I know. And I'm believing to find out just how good (laughs) He really is. Say it out loud. I believe believe in the love of God. God. I'm a strong believer. In the goodness of God. In uh, 1 Kings 10, this, this story to me portrays this truth so well. So many have not been told that God is good. They just haven't. And so they don't believe in the goodness of God. They haven't really heard. Others have heard it, but it just seemed too good. It just seemed like a fairy tale. It was just too far-fetched. You know, yeah, you have to remind yourself, some people tuning in for us the first time, they're just in amazement. They're like, 
they really believe all that? They look like they're having fun. You reckon they're all putting on, do you? I mean, the whole bunch of them. That'd be hard to do. Boy, it's orchestrated well. They all flow together. They, <laughs> they seem happy. Because see, people don't, they, they don't believe that. And the reason they don't believe it, because they don't believe in the goodness of God. They, they don't know Him that way. But it's our job to proclaim it and to be an example of it. Right? Because what turns people to God? What, what moves people to repent? And to change and turn it around. It's not just harping on them. It is them tasting and seeing and experiencing the goodness of God. And it has to be in the land of the living Amen. for them to see it. So should you and I, people talk about, well, you know, y'all should be evangelistic. We are very evangelistic. You, you don't have any idea how many people are confessing Jesus. Hmm? Over the internet and by the TV, it's happening all over the place. But you understand, you can, you can choreograph and you can move people to respond to leading a confession or even an invitation. That doesn't mean they're saved. People can repeat and parrot something after you and not be saved. But from your heart, when you get a revelation of who God is, when they see Him and begin to believe on His goodness, they'll want Him. They'll come to Him. By the masses, right? And then nobody can beat it out of them because they have tasted for themselves. And they see and know. He's real and He's good. 1 Kings 10. I'm thinking about closing. 1 Kings 10. This is the story of King Solomon, who has built upon the glory of his father David's kingdom. And now, I mean, if you look at all, I mean, the previous chapter tells about how much money is flowing into his kingdom on an annual and, and semi-annual basis. I mean, major, major, major money is flowing. And the Bible said there was so much gold then that silver was accounted as nothing. And normal, they had so much of the most precious timber like cedar that nobody used the lesser woods. I mean, they built everything out of cedar and they plated everything with gold. Forget brass and nickel. and They only used those if those materials worked better for the product. But, you know, people, you know, gold was everywhere and, and that kind of timber. And his kingdom was just spectacular. And the Queen of Sheba, you ever heard about her? Yes. There's been a lot of talk about her. Christians say, well, who does she think she is? The Queen of Sheba? Well, that'd be good. But the Queen of Sheba was somebody herself and a, and a lady of substantial means and power and influence herself. And she heard so much about Solomon and his kingdom that she just had to come check it out for herself. And so she came and she brought all kind of gifts and she had a lot of questions. She wanted to ask him to check out, see if he really is wise as what all they say. And she wanted to see for herself if he really is rich and, and, and magnificent as they say. And here in chapter 10, verse 1, when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. Now that's what we want. When people hear about how wonderful and magnificent our stuff is in their mind, they know it's connected with the name of the Lord. It's not just us. And she came to prove him or to test him with some hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train and camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she came in, she communed with him with all that was in her heart. And he told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, were they saving money? No. 
Huh? Were they posting regularly how much money they saved by using lesser materials and just not going overboard? And <laughs> That was the last thing on their mind. Their thought was what's the best in the earth and how can we improve it? Cost was down the list somewhere. And it takes some mind renewal to get there. But we can. That was kind of weak, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we won't give up. We'll <laughs> We're going to keep moving this way, right? His cup bearers by the ascending went up to the house of the Lord. When she saw all that, there was no more spirit in her. Uh, some would say it took her breath away. She was just in awe. Of what? Of what? Come, come on now, put yourself in it. She was in awe of the way the wisdom of God flowed through him and he answered all her questions. And to him, everything she asked that she thought was so hard, it was just easy to him. She thought, oh God, look at this. And then it was time for lunch. <laughs> and the cup bearers, Walked up in $10,000 suits. And the plates were $40,000 a piece. And the food, oh, the food, oh. <laughs> and the silverware, and the tablecloths, and the napkins were $5,000 a piece. Hmm? And a prophet of the Lord came in <laughs> and said, Woe, woe, woe unto you, wasting the Lord's money. Thou shalt be called to account, thou waster, blowing money on stuff like this. Who gave them this? Yeah. See, th th now, now, now get this, guys. This is too much for millions of Christians to believe. And it's right here in the Bible. But it's too much for them to believe. They're like, uh, I don't know what all that was, but no, I can, no, no, no. God's a thrifty God. Where's that scripture? Where is it? It's really important to God that you don't spend too much and you save that money. Where is that at? Where is it at? Mm. She saw all of that. She saw their shoes. She saw the chairs. She saw the doors. $90,000 doors. $100,000 chairs, and there were 50 of them at the brunch table. <laughs> I'm being conservative. She just kept seeing stuff and kept seeing stuff, and, it, and she's a queen herself. But this stuff makes hers look <laughs> cheap. And it just took her breath away. And is this, did, let me stop here, did this glorify the Lord? Yes. Did it make her want to believe on the Lord? Yes. And be a follower of Jehovah? It did. The history is there. Yes. What am, how are you going to impress a queen? Telling her how much money you saved on gas <laughs> or electricity. How much money you saved by using the paper instead of the, the good stuff? You ain't going to impress a queen. Right? I know a brother of mine, a fellow was taking him to task one, one day about riding in first class. He'd buy first class tickets when he flew. And uh guy was just chewing him up about it. And then he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, you don't fly in first class? He said, no, no, sir, and I would not waste the Lord's money like that. 
He said, those people up in first class, they need the Lord. They need to be ministered to. He said, well, it's obvious you're not going to be up there ministering to them, so I'm going to be up there with them. (laughs) This stuff has choked the body of Christ. It has choked us. It has kept us from being a witness to whole realms of the community and the world. Did you hear me? It's made people's children not want to be Christians. It's made pastor's children not want to be preachers. Did you hear me? Because they don't want to be broke. They don't want to beg for handouts. And they want to stand on their own two feet and hold their head up and, and have something. And they think that if they serve God, they can't. It's a lie. I said, it's a lie. God is a good God. He's so good, it's just too much for so many to believe. This is a type of the Lord. This is a type of His people and His kingdom. We ought to have stuff that's so nice, it's a conversation starter. Right? You go to work and people know what you get paid there. And they see you come in wearing that. And they go, whoa, whoa, oh. What is that? Where'd you get that? It should be a conversation starter. It should be a witness. A thing after thing after thing after thing. Telling people he's good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians 3, if you would. Ephesians 2, and I think I can close with this. Ephesians 2. The Lord gave us, Phyllis and myself, this verse when we were in the midst of hearing from the Lord about coming to Branson. And it 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 did something in us during that season. And it's with us to this day. Ephesians 2. We were experiencing some of God's goodness in Tulsa. He, he had blessed us and enabled us to be a blessing beyond what we had even thought about in a period of 20-some years. But he's better than we knew. And he's better than we know now. And his will is better than we thought and higher and bigger than we thought and sooner than we thought. Hmm? Come on, stir up. We can finish up good now. His will for you and me is better than we've known and bigger than we thought and sooner and closer. Come on now. Than what we had thought. Isn't He able to do exceeding abundantly above all we've asked Now listen, according to the power that's work, there's something got to be working in you. But see, the problem is so many have had so little working in them and what they have thought and asked has been so pitiful. And he's doing beyond what they asked or thought, but what they asked or thought is pitiful. So we've got to ask bigger and think bigger. Think bigger, ask bigger. Think bigger, ask bigger. And don't hang around people and listen to them that will talk you out of it. Don't do it. Don't bring it up around them. Talk about something else that doesn't matter if you have to, but don't bring it up around them and let them try to shoot it down. No, think bigger. You don't need to back off. You need to come up. Right? Say it out loud. Bigger. Better. Sooner. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2. The Lord was dealing with us. And it had taken us 20 years to build to where we were there. 
We'd just, we'd, we'd just gotten something. We'd just gotten a house that we'd believed for for 20 years. I'd just gotten my airplane hanger and paid for it. We'd just gotten some other things paid for, paid for. And we were, you know, best shape we'd ever been in. Ministry was the best shape. We had more meetings than we could get to. And uh, just, you know, thought, man, God's good. God's good. Life is good. And the Lord began to deal with us to believe it, leave everything, and come to Branson that we had not thought about. We thought, I'm sure it's a nice place, but why? That's the wrong question. Yeah. Faith doesn't have to know why. And I kept, you know, I checked it out a little bit, and I thought, man, they got a little short runway up there. Yeah. With a cliff on both ends with great big rocks. <laughs> and you can't have your own hangar, and it's no tower. And, of course, when you fly, all this stuff's important. And in our house, Phyllis had believed God for years. Somebody had come up a year before and hand, just walked up and handed her a wad of cash and said, F- fix your kitchen. She'd been believing for it. A big wad of cash. And she, and she put in all this new stainless stuff and new tile. And my man, got it just like she wanted. Just got it done about a month or so. And the house that we'd been believing for, it's thing after thing after thing. And one day I'm shaving. I've been wrestling with this a little bit. And I thought... Lord, we kind of kind of have to start over, you know, kind of. He said, do you believe I'm able to do better for you than this? Now, that's the question, isn't it? That's why people won't leave home. That's why people won't leave their little job. That's why people won't do something. Why? Because they're not convinced of the goodness of God. It's just too big. It's too good. I stopped, I laid my razor down. I said, yes, sir, I do. And that's the end of me thinking about this. And he has already. He has already. Better house, stronger ministry, more money, better aircraft, more people reached by far. Come on now. And he's just getting started. Good. He, he's just beginning to reveal His goodness to us. He's better than we thought. He's better than we've believed. And this is the determining factor. We've got to believe that He is good. And we've got to expect and believe to see this goodness of the Lord in the land of of the living. Now this is the verse, Ephesians 2.10. This is the verse the Lord gave us during that time. And we read it out loud out of the Amplified Bible every day during that season of our life. And I'm telling you, it ministered to us and helped us to believe He could do better for us than what we had seen before. Ephesians 2 and 10. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, the Amplified does just what you, you, you think. It amplifies it. Listen to it. I'm telling you, it's shouting ground. We, this is Ephesians 2.10. We are God's own handiwork. It's up on the screen. Can you see it? His workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew, that we may do those good works. works. Do you know you need good stuff to do good works with? You need good buildings, good lands, good facilities, right? Goodly bank accounts, good offerings, right? Good airplanes, good cameras, good satellite, good station time. You need a lot of good stuff to do the good works to get out the good news about the good God. Right? We've read about it. Look at how many times in the Bible talks about goods, goods. The Lord gave them goods, goods. Didn't say He gave them bads. He gave them goods. Goods. Goods to do good with. Look, keep reading. That we may do those good works which God predestined. 
planned beforehand for us. See, God had planned for us to come to Branson before we were born, and we didn't know it. Taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. A lot of you lived in another state last year. Right? I mean, or the year before. Or, but God knew He had a plan. What kind of plan is it? Taking paths which He prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. What? Living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. The good life. The good life. The good life. Well, how, what else could His plan be? How can a good God have a bad plan? Huh? How can a good God have a bad will? Or be pleased with bad stuff in your life? Or prepare a bad life for you? And bad things. How could a good God do that? It's against His nature. A good God. Has a good plan. Has a good will. Come on. Has prearranged and made ready for us to live a good life. A good life. A good life. A good life. life. Seeing, experiencing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Right here, right now. Somebody stand up and say, I believe it. I believe it. I believe 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 in the goodness, goodness, in the love, love, and the goodness goodness of God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. God's a good God. Yes, He is. Let's sing it again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, God is a good God. God's a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, God. God is a good God. Good God. Yes, He is. 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 Sing it again. God is a good God. Oh, you're a good God. Oh, I know God, God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, I know God, God is a good God. Is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. He is. He is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, I know God. God is a good God. God's a good God. Yes. Oh, I know God. God is a good God. He's a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, yes, He is. 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 Hallelujah. Now pray this out loud after me. And if you've never been born again, you can be. While we pray this prayer, everybody close your eyes and affirm or reaffirm your faith. And then we're going to pray beyond this. Said out loud, Father God, I believe in you. I believe you're real and that you are a good God whose will is good, whose plan is good, who does good things. I believe it. No matter what I've heard or seen or thought, are felt, I believe the Word. You're a good God. And Your will for me is only good. I believe in Your Son, Jesus, that You are so good that You gave Him to die for me, pay for all my sins. I believe in Your goodness. You raised Him from the dead. He's alive right now. 
I believe Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Savior, my Good Shepherd. I will serve you. I will follow you all the days of my life. And surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the good house of the Lord forever. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. God is a good God. Oh, yes, He is. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Let this Word work in your spirit. Let it work in you while you sleep tonight. Let it work in you in the morning. Let it work in you all next week. And there'll be times it'll rise up in your heart. And it'll come up in your mind. And you'll say it right out loud. God's better than this. God can do better than this. I'm expecting to see the goodness of the Lord in my life. Right here and now. In the land of the living. God's bigger than this. God can do better than this. I believe it. I'm expecting it. And it'll work in you. It'll work in you. It'll work in you. It'll work in you. And what you used to would settle for, you'll come up to it and you go, No, no, not anymore. God can do better than this. God's bigger than this. God's able to do much better than this. I'm going to expect better. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hands and begin to thank Him. That He is working in you to will and to do all of all His good pleasure. Oh, thank you, Lord. Can you imagine a better life than where you're at right now? Oh, come on, try. Can, can you imagine a life so high above where you are now that it's hard to remember where you used to be? <laughs> Finance is so strong that it's hard to believe you used to get upset over $100. Come on, close your eyes. Life's so good. That you can't remember the last time you thought about money to pay a bill. Oh, come on. Life's so good. Life's so good. Life's so good. Life's so good. Life's so good, good, good. God is good. And my life is good. Life is good. Life is good, good, good. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good, good, good. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good, good, good. God is good. And my life is good. Oh, hallelujah. Be saying life is bad, isn't it? Come on, stay with me a little bit. Close your eyes. You're not waiting on me to quit. God's waiting on you to see a better life than where you are right now. Can you see it? Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. Good, good. Life is good. Life is good. Watch me. Life is good. Life is good. Good, good. God is so good And my life is good Say Life is good Life is good Life is good Good, good Life is good Life is good Life is good Good, good Life is good Life is good Life is good, 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 cause my God is good. So my life is good. Hallelujah. Can you see yourself at a completely different place in life? 
No longer struggling with symptoms just to be able to get around and go, but man, energy to spare. Go and go and go and serve the Lord and still have energy left over. Not fussing and fighting and arguing all the time, but peace and joy in your home. So different than what it used to be. Oh, because life is good. Life is good, good, good. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good, good, good. Life is good. Life is good. Life is good, good, good. Because my God is good. That's why my life is good. He's good in the morning when he wakes me up on my bed. He's good when I open the Bible, every word that I have read. He's good in my spirit and my soul and touched my body and he made me whole and he and he's good and he's good all day he's good mm, every time I need a answer it's always there every time I need a touch how he cares every time I need some help every time the goodness of God does flow he makes me know what I need to know he pays the way wherever I need to go. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Good, good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Good, good. I say I know God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. My God is good. And that's why my life is good. Oh, hallelujah. He had a plan for me. A plan that was too good for me to originally see. But now I'm beginning to see. And the more I see how good God is to me, He's better than I thought, bigger than I thought. And it goes on and on and on, because my God is good. That's why my life is so good. Come on, sing it out loud. God is good. God is good. Everybody sing. God is good. God is good. Good, good. Oh, God is good. God is good, good, good. Everybody, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, my God is good. That's why my life is good. so good. Hallelujah. People say, can it really be that way? Can it really be that way? That's what they say. It's too good to be true. That just can't have happened to you. But I was there when it happened. I was there when he did. I've tasted and I saw. Oh, the Lord is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, my God, God is, is good. So my life is good. Is good. You ready to go? You know, some things you need to just keep doing till your head gets quiet. And it's just in your spirit. 
This is a simple little song, but it do you good to sing it tonight. Sing it on your way home. Lay in your bed and sing it. Because we believe in the goodness of God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh my God is good. So my life is good. Ha ha. No more depression. No more heaviness. No more down times. No more sadness. Every day is a victory day. I come up and up and up all the way. Cause my God is good. So my life is good. Hey, hey, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Everybody, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, my God is good. So my life is good. It's joy in the morning. Peace all through the day. And all this money keeps coming my way. Health in my body. Peace on my mind. And it's this way all the time. Oh, saying God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. 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 Everybody, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. God is God is God is good. God is good. God is. Ah, I'm not waiting for later To the sweet by and by Cause I've got Jesus Right here Right now He is with me Every day Said I'll be with you All the way So God is good so my life is good There never is a question He doesn't know the answer to I never need direction But what he shows me exactly what to do Every day is better than the last day It's glory to glory and grace to grace my life is good Cause my God is good Everybody say God is good God is good God is good Good, good God is good God is good God is good, good, good Everybody say God is good God is good God is good <laughs> Did you know the more you talk about it, the more He manifests it? The more you say, God is so good to me. God is so good to me. He does it. He manifests The more you say it, the more He does it. 
The more you talk about what doesn't happen for you and what you don't have and what nobody will do for you, that's the worse it gets. But my God is good. So my life is good. Close your eyes again. Can you see a better life? You wake up in the morning and it's better than it was yesterday. It's not the same old, same old. You're never bored, you're never down. Because you know. <laughs> yeah. God's working on your mansion. And He's got for you a crown. This is just the warm up. This is just first down. Oh, the party's getting started. It's just about to really be on. Because soon we're all going home. Oh, yeah. God is good. God is good. Oh, God is good. Good. Everybody say God. Some more. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. 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 Oh, Lord, you are so good. God is good. You're so good. to God. Come on, just praise Him, son. Just worship Him for His goodness. Oh, Lord, You are so good. You are so good. You've done so much for us. You've come through for us so many times, every time, again and again. You've healed us so many times. You've answered our prayers again and again. You've met our needs. You've brought us so far from where we were. Oh, hallelujah. You've been merciful. Merciful. Merciful to our shortcomings. Gracious concerning our failures. Oh, and our sins. You're so good. So good. So good. So good. So good. Because you are good. So my life can be good. Say, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Oh, my God. So my life is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ready to go? I dismiss you. You're dismissed. Is he good? I'm telling you, you want to have a good time in God, you just keep doing what we're doing right now. Just, just take it with you tonight. Just lay in your bed and go, God, you are so good. Oh, I worship you because you're so good to me. You are so good and your plan for me, the plan for our future. Oh, it's good. I know it's good beyond what I've asked and thought. I believe it's better than I've thought. I'm believing to see the goodness. God is good. God is God is good, good, good. Oh, my God is 
is good. So my life is good. We're dismissed if you want to be. God is good. God is good. God is good, good, good. Everybody say God is good.